Now people always say more VRAM is better or 8 gigabytes of VRAM is not enough. But the thing is for many, it's not really worth the extra cost to go out and buy more expensive GPUs, especially mid-range ballers who just want to play the quick casual title of a few AAA games. And the thing is if you want to game at higher resolutions and more demanding games at 1440p and 4K, you're typically going to spend a little extra money or at least more than what a mid-range is worth giving you that extra VRAM anyway. However, there's one huge caveat to that and that's older generation cards as many cards like the 3070 for example come with only 8 gigabytes of VRAM and as you know the 3070 is capable of a lot more but it's just held back because of its VRAM. That being said 8 gigabytes seem to be all the rage as you can see on Steam hardware survey. In fact it's gone up like 1% of usage in like the last month so 8 gigabyte cards aren't going anywhere. But in this video we want to see the impact of higher resolutions and game settings on VRAM usage and thus overall performance compared the RX 7600 XT and RX 7600 to see what optimizations can be made without sacrificing image quality, at least that much, at resolutions such as 1440p and 4K. And before you go ahead in the comments and say that the 7600 and 7600 XT are meant for 1440p and 4K, I say go your soul. Obviously they're not made for 1440p and 4k. We're testing these two cards because A they're the only cards that I have available and B they're pretty much the same performance tier as in their specs are pretty much identical. As you can see same cores, same TMUs, same ROPs. Really the only difference is the memory size going from 8GB to 16GB on the 7600 XT and pretty much a 100MHz increase in boost clock as you can see. And I'll throw up a few charts as well you can see that the performance is pretty much identical but as we get to the high resolutions of 1440p with ray tracing you can see there's a massive difference between the 7600 and 7600 XT but again we're using these cars as they perform identical when not in a VRAM limited scenario so anyway let's talk about it we're going to be testing first in the highest settings or at least close to the highest settings except for games like Cyberpunk as um, we got unplayable FPS enabling the highest path tracing settings, not recommended. And obviously anyone with half a brain is going to be playing their games at the highest ultra settings, especially when you have only 8GB of VRAM available. But again it's to give us an idea of a VRAM limited scenario of how you can optimize a game to reduce VRAM usage and thus increase FPS. Bringing it closer to a card with more VRAM. It will also give us an idea on how these GPUs will perform on future games that have higher system requirements, as these ultra settings that we're testing today will probably become the lower graphical presets of the games of tomorrow, which will help us understand whether or not Agubytes is future proof in 2024 and beyond. And starting us off in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, at the ultra high preset, you can see that the 7600 XT only outpaces the 7600 by 3% in average FPS. But as you can see, we did notice slightly higher shared memory usage on the 7600, which indicates that the game was trying to alleviate VRAM usage in some way. As you can see on the 7600 XT, the VRAM usage itself is a lot higher, while the RAM usage is lower than the 7600, but performance wasn't impacted as much. Now when more shared memory is used, the higher the overall performance impact is going to be. As even if using fast DDR5 RAM, like the 6000 mega transfers kit that I'm using, it's still going to have an impact as your GPU has to access it through the CPU, which adds latency. Now moving over to 4K with the Ultra Eye preset once again, we can see that the 7600 XT this time increased by 33% over the 7600. And take a look at the 1 and 0.1% lows, you can see that they're a lot higher as compared to the 7600. If you look at the VRAM usage of the 7600, it goes well beyond the 8GB mark. And the 7600 is using a lot more system RAM, indicating that there's a VRAM limitation there once again. Now to optimize the game, we're going to be using a guide from Xputer, the link will be in the description. And as you can see, it's a mix of medium to very high settings, as you can see right here. And if we have a look at the image quality impact using a neat little comparison tool, image comparison tool, I really like this tool. As you can zoom in, show side by side here, pinch and zoom around. 
and you can loop the video. You can see that we've got the ultra high preset on the left and the optimized game settings on the right. And really there isn't much of a difference here. Now these recordings are 4K. This video is gonna be recorded in 1080p, but both these clips here have been recorded in 4K. And as you can see, there isn't a huge departure in quality here at all. Now obviously this is the like the best comparison here. It's not like Digital Foundry where he's analyzing literally every single pixel on the screen, but it's just to give you an idea of the impact that optimizing the game settings has here. Maybe it's some of these other scenes here, maybe there's a bit higher texture quality on the ultra high settings. Now looking at the optimized comparison here, you can see that there's only 1% difference between the 7600 and 7600 XT in terms of average FPS. However, on the 7600 system RAM usage seems to be still pretty high. And also the 1% and 0.1% lows on the 7600 XT are slightly higher still. But overall, you can see that optimizing the game, the performance between these two GPUs are a lot closer. However, at 4K, we still saw roughly a 4% increase on the 7600 XT. But again, VRAM usage remained acceptable and a lot less when compared to ultra high settings. Now comparing the 7600 side by side with the ultra high preset and the optimized settings, we've pretty much gained 192% increase in average frames, while our 1 and 0.1% lows drastically increased. And what's funny is literally our 0.1% lows on our optimized settings here are literally what we were getting on average FPS. So I think it's safe to say that optimizing the settings drastically increases our FPS. But more importantly, our VRAM usage is quite a bit lower, but not like a huge, huge margin lower or anything. But it's still a decrease nonetheless, and the game still looks pretty good. Now next up, we tested Cyberpunk 2077 at the RT Ultra preset with FSR set to auto. Again, it's not the highest preset, but it's enough for comparison's sake. And a 1440p Cyberpunk fared a lot better than I expected. Though again, clearly we were VRAM limited in some capacity on the 7600, as system RAM once again was quite a bit higher than on the 7600 XT and on the 7600 XT we were going beyond the 8 gigabyte mark which tells us that we were VRAM limited. That being said we only got like a 3% increase in average FPS which isn't that huge even though we are technically being VRAM limited here. Although the 1.1% lows did seem quite a bit high on the 7600 XT though. Even at 4K, the difference wasn't huge, at least in average FPS, returning only a 12% delta between the 7600 and 7600 XT. However, since we are at low frame rates here, those differences especially start to matter. Take the lows, for example. They were considerably higher on the 7600 XT, and that's where most of the impact comes from. Now for optimizing Cyberpunk, once again, we use the guide from Xputer. Again, the link is in the description. Basically, it's a mix of medium to high settings, and we also enabled FSR balanced as well which wasn't in this guide, but we enabled it anyway. And looking at the impact on image quality using our fancy tool, Nvidia Image Comparison Tool, we can see RT Ultra Preset on the left, Optimized on the right, and obviously there's gonna be difference in terms of the reflections as, you know, it's the RT Ultra Preset compared to no ray tracing. But if you squint your eyes a little bit, there's not really that much of a difference when optimizing the game here. Like you can see here, here's a big example of the ray tracing. There is a massive difference there, once again, because it's RT Ultra preset. But overall, even at the optimized game settings, the game still looks pretty good, in my opinion. Like, amazing, actually. And now looking at the results when we optimize the game in Cyberpunk 2077, we can see that drastically decreased our VRAM usage, with only a tiny tad bit over 4 GB of usage on our 7600, or pretty much half of the VRAM of the 7600 as you can see. And the 7600 XT returns to only about a 3% lead, which is what you come to expect on the 7600 XT because of that clock speed increase. And as you can see, the lows are pretty much indistinguishable between these two. And on 4K, there's only about a 2% increase in average frames, which is actually lower than 1440p. And our VRAM usage stayed relatively low on the 7600, which is a massive departure from RT Ultra settings. Now here at 4K, comparing the RT Ultra preset to the optimized settings here, just on the 
600. We can see that optimizing the game led to a massive increase in average frames by a whopping 272% in average FPS. But more importantly, our overall VRAM usage dropped by a considerable margin, while our system memory dropped exponentially, while our game still looked extremely good, in my opinion. Next up we have F123, which we first tested at the ultra high preset with F sus at the quality, and starting us off once again in 1440p, we can see that even at the ultra high preset, there's only a difference of about 5% and our lows pretty much stayed within a couple of frames between these two GPUs. However, despite that, we are clearly limited to VRAM on the 7600, but this game, I expect due to the good optimization, seems to fare very well when it comes to VRAM. Now at 4K, the difference was a lot higher, with the 7600 XT pulling ahead by 10%, as the VRAM limitation became ever more clear on the 7600, especially in our 0.1% lows, as they took a massive beating, which again, given our frame rate overall, is going to matter a lot at these lower frame rates. Now to optimize F123, we used the guide from Racing Games GG, again it will be in the description. We pretty much used a mix of high to ultra high settings, and ray tracing is disabled here. We also went ahead and set FSR to balance this time around instead of quality. And how did that impact our image quality? Well I'll show you. Upon first inspection it looks like most of the image quality difference comes from the reflection in the car. If we look at it side by side, you can see that is apparent there. It looks a lot more matte on the ring here, and it looks much more reflective when ray tracing was enabled. Hold on, let me just put the ultra high preset on this side and optimize there. And there you go. So ultra high preset is on the left, and optimize is on the right. And yeah, it's pretty apparent that most of that difference is coming from the reflections in terms of the car, but everywhere else, it doesn't look that different. Maybe the lighting does look a little bit more natural on the road ahead, but overall it's not a huge difference. And looking at our optimized results here at 1440p, we can see unfortunately there was still only like a 5% difference between the 7600 and 7600 XT. And overall the VRAM usage was still quite high, and at the same time the 1 and 0.1% lows still took a pretty big beating when optimized. Now moving over to 4K, interestingly this time there was a 15% difference separating our two GPUs. And our lows, for whatever reason, fared better at 4K, but the 7600 XT is still a lot higher in this department by a considerable margin. So sadly, in our case, optimizing the game doesn't really help overall with VRAM limitations. As you can see, our VRAM usage is still quite high with our shared memory usage being considerably high on the 7600 compared to the 7600 XT. Maybe further optimization could help, but judging by our overall usage, I'm not really sure about that. However, comparing the 7600 alone, at 4K, we got a 91% increase in frame rate, and our lows increasing exponentially. It's just sad that our VRAM usage is still quite high, otherwise we'll be getting slightly more performance here as well. Now for our last game today, Forza Horizon 5, we tested at the extreme preset with FSR set to quality. And looking at our 1440p results, you can see very clearly that we are VRAM limited, with exponential system RAM utilization on the 7600 compared to the 7600 XT. But what's even more exponential is that the 7600 XT pulled ahead by a massive 52%, which which is just crazy if you think about it. Our lows, especially our 0.1% lows, were just leagues better on the 7600 XT. And a 4K, it just gets even worse, well obviously. With now a 54% lead in average FPS on the 7600 XT, with the system RAM usage on the 7600 once again jumping by a massive shit ton, and our lows taking a massive hit as a result. Now for optimizing Forza Horizon 5, we used a guide from Digital Trends, and that gave us a mix of medium, medium to ultra settings. Again, we set FSR to balance. And looking at our trusty image comparison tool once again, we can see that it's probably the smallest difference in quality like I've seen today. Maybe there's a bit more jagged edges as, as you can see on the car detail and model. If you pause, there's probably, yeah, there's more detail in the track quality here. And as you can see, the level of detail has had a clear impact. There's way more blobbiness on the optimized settings on the foliage over here, as you can see. But those are things that you really aren't going to notice when you're, you know, driving at 120 miles per hour here. I would say there's probably better reflections on the extreme preset as well. But zooming out, there's not really a massive difference 
And if I had a blindfolded test or something, I probably would not be able to tell the difference at all unless someone told me. Now, optimizing the settings, the 7600 and 7600 XT became almost indistinguishable in performance, with less than a percent difference between them in average FPS. This is also true for our lows as well. I think it just goes to show the importance of optimizing the game. As you can see, VRAM usage is just a lot lower. Therefore, achieving a similar level of performance compared to something like the 7600 XT with double the VRAM. Well, the game, in my opinion, still looks fantastic. Like even at 4K, the difference is still really small. It's admittedly a larger difference, but not anything to write home about, only being about 3% increase on the 7600 XT in average FPS. Well, once again, the VRAM usage, even at 4K, stayed extremely low on the 7600. Now comparing the 7600 on the extreme preset to optimize side by side, we can see that we got a ludicrous 119% increase in average frame rate, which is just a night and day difference and 1.1% lows. And what isn't a night and day difference? The overall quality, as you can see. It keeps the VRAM usage extremely low, and the game just still looks fantastic in my eyes, even when optimized. So overall, more VRAM can enhance the overall gaming experience to an extent, but may not always justify additional costs, especially for mid-range ballers, like I said, who just want to play the quick casual title or a few AAA games. However, that being said, with graphics improving almost every year with new releases, and as system requirements literally skyrocket, VRAM requirements will almost certainly increase, meaning cards like the aforementioned 3070 are going to be even more held back by their VRAM. Meaning even a capable card like the 3070 is going to have performance left on the tape. We even saw this in the games that we tested today. Not every game fared the same as others, even when we optimized the game settings like in F1 23 compared to something like Forza Horizon 5, as F1 continued to have quite high VRAM usage. That being said, you could spend a little extra time instead of just using the guides we used to optimize the games today, optimizing the game yourself to lower that VRAM usage while still having great image quality. However, of course 8GB cards like the 7600 aren't going anywhere, backed up by the Steam hardware survey again, being the most popular VRAM size for 1080p games. 8GB of VRAM is more than enough, even when cranking settings, so they still have their place. Overall, it really depends on what games you're playing and resolution, but like we observed today, optimizing your games and ensuring that you're not burning your money by spending money where you shouldn't be helps a ton. But as the never Never-ending demands of system requirements increase, literally year on year, 8GB of VRAM is going to start feeling more like 4GB of VRAM today. So that's it for this video. I hope I didn't bore you with all these, you know, comparisons. But if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also be sure to check out our RX 7600 XT review. We'll have that up on the screen right now.